going on? Welcome to the Weekly Axe Kicking. Today we're continuing to look at a solo guitar transcription of the Beatles' Eight Days a Week. Alright, so we're going to take a look and talk about uh, this next little section of the song and how we come up with the solo guitar version of that. And, as I've been saying the past couple weeks, keeping it very basic. There's a lot more we can do, but we're starting at a very base level. So let's listen for this next part. This should be the B minor to G, then B minor to E7 uh, chord progression. Let's see here, let me find it. Yeah, right here. Right here. So again, uh, this will this process will start with finding out what the harmony is and um, just to expedite the process, it is a B minor chord to a G chord, back to B minor, to E7. And now we listen for the uh, lead vocal line and we figure out how we kind of just, you know, merge this harmony and the melody together. So let's listen for that. Even though the harmony changes, the vocal line has basically uh, this one idea that gets repeated. It starts on F sharp, and then going on a major third interval to a D uh, D natural. So, and then uh, we can hear that D uh, D natural uh, raise a major second interval to that's two half steps to an E natural. And then going down a perfect fourth to B natural. Me, love me. And that vocal line repeats. So we got the. Now we need to combine that with um, the chords that are going on in the background. So we have a B minor. And look at that. Once again, we have something that fits like a glove. We've got the top note of the vocal melody, um, yeah, we, we've got the top note of the chord, I should say, is actually the same note as the vocal line. So that works out perfect. You could do an entire strum of that chord and you'll have, you'll have this little part of your transcription. And then the next part, uh, that next vocal line, as we looked over, was a D natural. That note is also within the B minor chord, so we're obviously this time we're not going to want to strum the entire B minor chord because the note that will be most prominent, that'll ring out the most, will be the F sharp. And the vocal line isn't hold me, it's hold me. So maybe doing something like this, or, or you know, just something. Something to, uh, where you hit that B minor chord, great, but emphasize that D natural vocal line note. So, um, you know, we can do an entire strum, and then just... Uh, just like a couple fingers on, um, you know, the bass and the uh, and the D natural note. I think that's actually a good way to do it. In that, um, you know, it's still you're still just doing that minor third interval. You know that uh, you have the root of your B minor chord, the B main. I'm sorry, the the B natural note and the uh, minor third of your B minor chord, the D. You know, those we're, we're omitting the fifth, but the fifth is not a tendency tone, so it doesn't really count. Um, more on that another time. But uh, since we have those two notes, we're expressing the minorness, if you will, of that chord. We're expressing that minor quality of the chord while also getting across the vocal line. So we can play it like this, whole strum, and then root third. That's fine. We could also add the fifth if we want uh, on the root third part. So we'd add an F sharp here. That's fine. Fills out the sound a little bit if we want it to fill out a little bit. So. What I'm saying is we have options, as long as uh, we keep our bass rule intact and in that you express the harmony and the vocal line. So the next vocal line is the E natural and then a B natural. And that's over a G chord. Now the entire strum of the G chord will have, you know, this, uh, normally it will have a, a G natural on top, that is not the vocal line. The vocal line is actually an E natural, which if we combine this E natural vocal line note um, on top of a, a G major chord, we now have a G6. And 
that's how we're going to do it. We'll just do a full strum of a G chord, leaving out um, the G on top, and we'll uh, make it a make it an E natural on top. So just like that. And then we have uh, the same kind of thing as before when we had the the minor third over uh, as a vocal melody note over a B minor chord. This time we have a major third. We have a B major note that's going to be ringing over the G major chord. So we can do root third, G and B major. I'm sorry, G and B natural. I keep saying major. I mean, I mean natural. G and B natural note. Or we can fill out that chord as much as we want. As long as the top note in your chord that you're playing is the vocal line. So let's see what we got so far. Something like that can work. Even something like that might work. Um, I like to fill out the sound a little more, but whatever. Again, we have options. Now what happens after that, we're going to repeat this B minor thing. And then we have the same vocal line over an E7 chord. So uh, once again, this vocal line of E, it's actually, the, again, the top note of the chord we're actually playing. So great, fits like a glove again. Uh, the next note will be a uh, B natural note, and um, that's also contained in the E7 chord. And you have a lot of options here because with an E7, we have four different pitches, and, you know, because it's a seventh chord, it's not a triad. So we can choose to uh, include that B natural note. Uh, we can do it by itself. We can do it with the bass note, with the root. We can do it with um, the bass note in the seventh, the D natural. Or we can do it with uh, uh, root, third, seventh. The third is going to be on this G sharp. Whatever. Again, options. So uh, let me play just a little version of that for you up close, and uh, we'll take a look at more of this stuff next week. See you then. Thank you.